Hey folks, um, at my buddy Mike's, he's got this Wilderness Systems Attack 140 roll. Really nice classic boat that they don't make anymore. Um, they discontinued this boat. It's one of my favorite kayaks of all time. Very efficient hull. Uh, but he had, this kayak had a boo-boo. Uh, <laughs> a tree fell on it with, with ice and stuff and there was there's this big chunk that just fell out of there. So I'm using this opportunity to uh, to show how to do a little bit of plastic welding. Um, and you know, anywhere you get a crack, sometimes you get them in scupper holes and other parts of the, the boat, uh, or wherever there is, you know, a crease that that you have damage. Uh, you're going to have two adjoining surfaces that are no longer connected. So I'm going to use a couple things. Um, the torch here, I got to dig into my my box here and get a flathead screwdriver. It's sort of almost it once I find that. Um, but I need material. So I'm going to heat up here and here and stick it together. And I'm going to heat several different places and then just get it in there and heat the whole thing but that's really only going to fuse you know the the top to make it watertight do you see all these little little shavings from i just used that drill bit to put a bunch of little holes because i just i'm harvesting the material from there you know it's a place where you don't need the the plastic you know, to keep it watertight, it's it's on the inside of where this uh, this gasket touches. So these holes aren't hurting anything, and I needed the material. And I'll use you know I, I use the torch to kind of add material up top, and then heat it and smush it and smooth it smooth it down. At least then we'll get this back on there, and it will be watertight. I don't know how structurally strong. This is going to be afterwards, but I will get it watertight. So keep watching. You'll see those steps on uh, how to do some plastic welding. Good man. Oh, oh, I'm not even. This is just the beginning. Like I gotta, I gotta. You can help by. Oh, I blew that off. So what I end up doing oh, yeah. is I just I sprinkle those in, and it gives me more material. I'm gonna need it there because of that dimple down. Yeah. The water's gonna collect there. So we just while well, this stuff is hot. I might have more plastic. If you got another um, chunk, don't even need to be the same color. Yeah, no, I mean, but here's the thing. I got, you can, you, you can just get it right here. And this is the size I need. These drill marks, just keep going. Oh, okay. Gotcha, I see what you're doing, yeah. So I've gone all the way around the perimeter of this and just used the the flat screwdriver to kind of smush it together you know you heat both sides i got i got it started up here 
and I tried to even it up so as much of this has contact as possible. Um, we have a low spot here that I couldn't get to totally match up. I think this is where the branch probably came down and struck and it's deformed the plastic, plastic there. Water is going to pull there so this is the location where I will use the majority of these little pieces uh, just to build it up. So I'll keep going and I'm going to build up all the way around. Um, Mike just came over and I said you can help by drilling more holes in that area um, it'll it'll for sure you know when I have more material to work with I can do a better job sealing up and making sure that it's watertight but while this is soft which it's it's hardened up on the outside and parts of this are watertight um, but you you stick the the shreds to it and you know like these I stuck in there when I hit that with heat again it'll just smooth out and I've just added more um, more material to that area to strengthen it and make it watertight all right so you can see if you look in this area right here um, we've added a lot of material there uh, Mike was able to drill a bunch more holes and just kept feeding stuff to me um, now what I want to do is go around the, the perimeter and add more I'm gonna I'm gonna get more corkscrew shavings from the drill here so that I can just add material on top of this this area doesn't need it as much this is clearly our low point and our most vulnerable area to um, to water intrusion so we've we've spent the most time there but now we got to go and just just firm up the uh, the perimeter and then it should be done I got a nice healthy pile of this stuff here from drilling a bunch more holes. I'll just go around this perimeter, you know, starting right up here. 
we added a lot there and there and I'm just working around. Tell you what, while I'm here, we got some nasty gouges here. I don't know if you can see that right on the edge there. We're just going to clean those up while we're in here. Just smooth them out. Oops, if I have the flathead screwdriver. Honestly, sometimes you don't even need to touch it with the, with the screwdriver. Just, just the heat rounds it out. You got some over here too. Yep, that's already looking better. All right, let's continue on with adding more material up here. When it's tacky, when you add some, it just it balls up there. And you want it to, to just flatten out on its own weight a little bit. And then if you need to give it some direction and say, I want you to live here you can do that with the uh, with the screwdriver I'm having trouble with it getting stuck on there but I just take the other screwdriver and pop that off and just reuse it so if it's sticking to your your putty knife or flathead screwdriver um, if it's doing that real bad, let it cool off a little bit and it'll still be a little bit soft but not totally gooey and not quite as sticky. And then you can come back in and flash it again and it shouldn't, uh, you know, it should smooth it out nicely. But letting it cool a little bit while the whole base is kind of gooey let you work with it without it sticking here all right so probably the most important skill in plastic welding is knowing when to leave it alone and uh, fortunately or unfortunately um, Mike's little butane torch ran out of juice and uh, you know I, th I think I'm there you know I don't think there's any water getting in there and in terms of structural integrity i don't know that we'll get a motor back on on here mounting to this surface i don't think it's structurally sound enough for that anymore you'd have to go further further forward and maybe even use the the rudder inserts that are back here to support a motor but at least in terms of uh being watertight i think we've completed a successful plastic weld time will tell we'll put a hose on this later and uh see how it did all right got the hose there ready to test it here in a minute but i just wanted to show you the close-up if i wanted to get really greedy with it i'd uh, reach up in there with the uh, dug here i dug and uh and do some work from the inside i'm not gonna do that fyi this was it's all a lot of plastic that I took out of there and it's all laying on top so let's put the hose on it test it you want a drink you want a drink Doug no I don't want to get wet all right reach inside there there was already some moisture but I'm feeling the inside of that maybe there's a little bit of moisture yeah tiny bit of moisture there so I could keep going 
I'll get, I'm not going to film it, but I'm going to start on this side, add more plastic to it, and, uh, you know, I, I don't see it bubbling up. So maybe it's it's coming from from there. Are you thirsty, Doug? Doug is thirsty. You know what? We're missing an insert. <laughs> That's where the water's coming from. I think this is watertight, and I'm gonna leave it alone. All right, end of video. See you. Say goodbye, Doug. Doug. Say goodbye. Bye-bye.